Be The Talk, episode 149, featuring Sari Gilman. Welcome to Be The Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Sari Gilman. Sari, are you ready to talk? I'm always ready to talk. Let's do this. A license about our topic today. A licensed psychotherapist, Sari Gilman teaches essential skills to clarify boundaries, lower stress, and face overwhelm. Sari is a keynote speaker, workshop presenter, and author of Transform Your Boundaries and Naming and Taming Overwhelm for Healthcare and Human Service Providers. Sari offers relevant practical online courses at Sari Gilman. Dot com. Sari Gilman, welcome to the talk. Thanks for having me, Nathan. This is such a great thing to talk about, how yeah. people do talks. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, we're, I mean, with all the preparation that we do to do these things, we, I mean, we leave so much gold <laughs> on the table. I cannot believe what it has taken to do a TEDx talk. I yeah. mean, the preparation was unbelievable, but I got to say it was totally worth it. Totally worth it because it did get the message out and it's reaching people. And so, but boy, a lot of work. So I'm excited to, to have this conversation with you because, uh, it, it was a lot to prepare for. Well, I'm, you know, we're ready to rock this thing. Your TEDx talk has been getting a lot of popular, probably because we all need better boundaries in our lives. Uh, what, you know, where we live, where we work, we can all use them. where we I worship. Mean, good for everybody. Yeah, we're Nobody just, is ever walking around without needing their yes and their no. I mean, we're stamping on everybody else's toes. Now we have these little cyber boundaries and we have social media and all of this stuff. So Sari's talk, her TEDx talk is called Good Boundaries Free You. We're going to get into that in a moment. I want to mention, I'm in very popular talk, over a quarter million views at this point, uh, just on oh, just under, as of yesterday, 270,000 views. So, uh, you know, congratulations on that. And, uh, you know, hopefully every minute of preparation was worth it when you start rising in, in the ranks like that. So, uh, oh, gosh, well, it's really, you know, it's exciting to see the notes that people leave on the talk and how it has touched people all around the world. And um, and I love reading those messages from people. And I know that those are the people that are sharing it. Like if it really touches you, you'll share the talk. And if it really helped you in that moment, then it was worth everything that it took to put it together because that that's the whole point of it make it worth your while to sit and listen to these yeah well sari i mean i i took a couple of notes on the talk i think the big takeaway <laughs> for me is that if it, it's like ripping off the band-aid it, it, if you mm -hmm. set that boundary from what i learned from you if you set that boundary and then you enforce that boundary it's kind of like ripping off the band-aid short-term pain but you enjoy long-term gain and you give us a, some tools for boundaries, including a compass that tells us yes or no. And if we follow that compass, we're going to be able to have some long-term gain. So please just summarize uh, the talk and, and, and give us some of the, the high points of that talk. Well, the talk is also summarized in a book that I wrote. So that so if people want more than just this mm -hmm. brief little summary, they can turn to the book, Transform Your Boundaries, because I did take pieces of that and put it in the talk. But the point of the talk is that all of us have inside of us a compass, a yes and a no. And we're born with that. You know, if you meet children all around the world, they have a yes and they have a no. And um, and when we grow up into adulthood, we can lose touch with that compass, with our real truth. And we find that, you know, people don't want to hear our yes and our no. And so we keep it to ourselves. And what we end up doing is letting other people decide where our boundaries are. And just so that everybody listening is clear, boundaries are just your yeses and your noes. It's just that collection of those. But we we don't necessarily learn how to listen to that compass. And we end up trying to navigate through life, really struggling with that. And more importantly, these days, I think the relevancy of the topic of boundaries is that I think people are starting to become aware that it's not only about your compass, but it's about recognizing other people's compasses, right? So it's not just the fact that I have a compass and what's my boundary and what's my yes and what's my no, but I'm curious about what's your yes and what's your no. 
And, and when we bring that kind of curiosity to our relationships and we start connecting and really listening to each other and asking about boundaries and having conversations using the word boundaries, then our relationships get better. So in my talk, in my TEDx talk, Good Boundaries Free You, I am explaining not just this concept, but I share different stories from my own life learning lessons about my compass, about the things I had to do to really listen to my yes and no. One of the things I had to do was to learn how to be uncomfortable, you know, to say my truth, even though it makes me sweat. People think, well, I'm only going to set that boundary if it's a, you know, if I'm like ready to set it. But really in my talk, what I explain is sometimes we don't feel ready but we need to say it anyway. And, and the process of saying it can, can make us sweat and it can be very difficult. And so setting boundaries isn't very easy. And so that's, there's lots of different points in the talk, but that's kind of the big picture. Sure. Well, and I'd love to, to see um, if we can pivot, because I, I see one of your books is for, uh, for people in healthcare. And I mean, man, what, what a boundary infused or boundary less, uh, industry that is, you've got all kinds of uh, zones and and stepping over the zones and and urgency and criticalness and no margin for error. So, uh, can you can you just kind of give us a little snippet, uh, Sari, on how you apply this really important principle of knowing your inner boundaries and becoming aware of of what the boundary is if, as you've just defined it, and then the kind of work that you do in uh, healthcare. Well, in healthcare, human services, and in education, all those particular fields, you work with a lot of people. This is where we do people work. And when you do a lot of people work, your boundaries get pushed on a lot. And so you're having to navigate with a lot of invisible boundaries. And so in these, if you're working in these particular fields, boundary work might save your life. Boundary work might save you from those feelings of being overwhelmed from your work because it's such a borderless world of working with people and all the boundaries are so invisible that unless we get a handle on it, we find ourselves, you know, really depleted and exhausted from doing that kind of work. So I like to, and I have also spent my life working um, in the field of healthcare and human services. And so to me, I've turned my attention now on how are the people in the field doing and, and what can we offer to help and support them in the field. And I'm looking back at a lot of, you know, things, skills that I needed back then and things that make a big difference and, and sharing them with people. And these days, overwhelm is pretty widespread. So that other book is on overwhelm. And uh, do you know anybody who's not overwhelmed? I mean, I, I want to meet them. <laughs> for sure overwhelm is like everywhere these days and um and i'm concerned about that it speaks to our lack of boundaries or control over our lives and i'm really concerned about what's happening yeah well as as am i and many people in talk universe listening know uh someone or they are in healthcare themselves and it it's like trying to put a fire out with your hands cuffed sometimes uh uh for for many people and uh, I, I something that you said about a minute ago uh uh, Sarah, you mentioned working in the field and developing a a toolbox. Uh, my word, not yours, but but a set of of tips or tools that actually helped uh, that you wish you had known at the beginning of your career. Could you just give us one of those that that might help someone uh, listening right now? Um, one of them is watching how many hours you work in a week and how many hours you put in in a day, because there's a point at which we're working in the day with people where we reach an exhaustion point where we're not really able to listen or function or focus. Mm -hmm. And it, I've really learned what's my tired point, what's my threshold. And I really like others to learn what is your threshold. And sometimes we have really unrealistic expectations of having people put in 16 hour days. I mean, I, do you want to see somebody that's on their 16th hour of the shift? I don't even want to see them on the 12th mm -hmm. hour of their shift. So getting people to recognize how do you stay tuned into yourself and recognize, wow, I'm at my maximum here. 
what is my maximum? What does my body need? How long have I been sitting in this chair? You know, to stay tuned in better and to learn how to take rest breaks and stopping points and how to change your hours to really accommodate when you need to stop. Well, there you just said it because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the worst case scenario, which would be a medical resident whose, uh, th- upper threshold has just been lowered from, you know, 120 hours a week or whatever it used to be down to only, 85 or 90 or whatever the 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 hourly limit is right you? now. That oh, absolutely you. does. Absolutely does. And and so uh and and, and the really scary I'm driving home afterwards yeah. too on yeah. a shift like that. Yeah, but, well and, and and the the really scary thing is that the the older generations of physicians think that the current generation is soft because they're only putting in, you know, 90 hours a week uh, by law or or less. So you just mentioned a couple th- just knowing yourself putting in extra breaks putting in extra rest breaks, uh, just even framing it as an issue, I think, could really empower someone to, uh, you know, if you're brilliant enough to be able to go through the the academic rigors, you can certainly develop, I would hope, the intrapersonal intelligence to and, and to kind of gamify it a little bit to uh, to give yourself the margin uh, that you're going to need. But I, I'm just really fascinated about the book. I've interviewed other people who have uh, been very brave in uh, raising this issue of healthcare burnout and physician burnout and, and very, very real things uh, that are happening uh, out oh, there. Well, so check out that book, Naming and Taming Overwhelm. The mm-hmm. boundary book, Transform Your Boundaries, is written for the general public. So mm-hmm. it's not really just people in healthcare or human services. Mm-hmm. And that's written to help people um, develop all this the tools and the skills to dig out their own boundaries and to recover your boundary system. Well, we've been enjoying this riveting conversation. We're going all over the place, folks, with boundaries. It's a it's a well boundaried free conversation with Sari Gilman, uh, and her talk is called "Good Boundaries Free You." And we'll be back in just a moment with the Blitz Round. People ask, "How could I start a seven day a week podcast?" It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we're back with Sari Gilman, and it is time for the Blitz Round. This is where oh, I ask. I'm yeah, it's no, don't be nervous. It's a, I'm just going to ask you a series of either or questions related to the preparation and the performance of your recent branded talk. Sari, are right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Ready. Question number one Were you selected to speak or did you apply? It was kind of a both. <laughs> you were nominated to apply. That's that's what that's by called. A lot of people. That's what that's called when when people tell me both that you got nominated to apply. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Are you a a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? Oh my gosh, I am. I well for the talk, I memorized it, um, and that was the hardest thing because I'm not a memorizer. So <laughs> yes, I memorized it, but I am not a memorizer. Mm-hmm. That was the scariest part of the talk. Yeah. Well, uh, um, did you have, frankly, did you have nerves or were you in the zone or (laughs) neither or both? Oh, my God. I had to take a class in mindfulness-based stress reduction just to get through getting up to the day and still be breathing. And and this is the woman that wrote the book on overwhelm. And you had to take a class on top of the book. Not only that, yeah, I teach this stuff and I teach it and I... It didn't matter. I needed more. I needed those to teach me, to support me, to hold me through that experience because, you know, you get lost in your thoughts about how how much stress it is. And of course, we're just making it up. So I learned to do this thing before my talk that I now do all the time, which is I just look around the room and I ask myself, where is the calm coming from? Mm -hmm. Where can I draw in some calm? And then I just kind of choose my calm might be from some kind of like plant that I just noticed or the soft lighting or something. And then I just bring myself into that calm. Hmm. So you've already answered the question, but besides what you just, the excellent tip tip 
technique or tool that helped you there. What's another one that helped you? Oh, my gosh, practicing and practicing and practicing. <laughs> I mean, I, dev- I devoted endless amounts of time to, to this. So what really helped me was to not have pressure of lots of other commitments. And so I, kind- I decided that this message was so important to me to get out that I was going to clear like a lot of time off mm-hmm. my schedule, like four months, and devote myself to really getting inside of this talk so that at least I knew when that little light went on that I was giving it my best and that, um, and that if it didn't come out too well and it was a disaster that at least I know I tried. And so it was, you know, it was putting the time in and not a lot of people are going to clear a lot of things off their schedule for four months, but I took nothing else that was strenuous or difficult or challenging. I taught no workshops during those four months um, because I didn't, I just didn't want any more kind of pressure or expectation on me. Just having the talk was enough pressure. Talk for- universe. If you can, if you can have the wherewithal to be able to clear, clear out boundary space to mm-hmm. prepare for your talk, it's going to pay big dividends. I mean, uh, series talk again, it's closing in on 300,000 views. And I mean, in light of being able to impact, I mean, that's a, that's not even a B level city. That's, that's almost a major city. I mean, that's, that's half the population of the actual city limits of Atlanta. 300,000 people. Now, you know, the metro is a little bit bigger, but I mean, that, that is impacting a lot of people. Uh, and uh, I've, that's not, uh, th- I'd like to say I'm really surprised to hear that, but I'm not because I've heard other people say that they've, they've committed months. To doing this and uh, yeah, and it pays I say off. To people, clear your decks. Mm-hmm. Like make this the thing that you're doing. If you really think your message is important and you want to get it out and you want people to hear it, then devote yourself to it. So that when you walk away from having given your talk, that you you gave it all that you had. And I don't think it would have been as good of a talk if I didn't clear the time mm-hmm. to really just be the talk, just get inside the talk. You got to, you got to go behind the talk so that you can become the talk and give that talk to change the world. And we're seeing it right here, right now. Final question. Um, you know, it's a performance. So what's the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk? Oh my gosh. I can tell you this because the strangest thing that happened is a girlfriend of mine flew in to be in the audience And I knew she was coming and she's an actress and we've spent our lives talking to each other, but I knew I'd feel more confident on the stage, just knowing that she was in the audience. What I didn't know was that she fell on her way into the theater and she had to go get stitches in her face and she face, she didn't her face, an actress, right? An actress fell and had to get stitches into the theater and and the stitches were on her face. That's a bad fall. It was a bad fall. Oh my word. Was she okay? She's okay now, but she wouldn't let anybody tell me before I went on to the stage. So when I was on the stage, I was just picturing in my head that she was in the audience and we were having a conversation and I was just talking to her. And then I looked down and there's my daughter sitting in the front row, which I did not expect. And my daughter is looking up at me the whole time. And I just felt that connection of like, I just needed one person to look Mm -hmm. at. And I was so grateful that it was my daughter. Then afterwards, I was like, Val, where are you? And I'm like calling her on the phone going, you know, it's a big theater. I can't find you. Where are you? She's like, I'm in the ER, honey. (laughs) So that was my most unexpected thing. Okay, this is this has been a riveting conversation. As I said before, it's gotten even more riveting. And before we uh, go back to Sari in just a moment for the final word of advice, I want to let you know where you can go to find out more about her. If you missed it already, we said it a couple times, SariGilman.com. You can go to our show notes page, BeTheTalk.com. I will have a link to her talk, which is called Good Boundaries for You. It's had uh, over, uh, when by the time you've heard this, probably very close or above. Of, uh, 300,000 views uh, at the time that you're listening to this, you can go to sarigilman.com. Sari's first name is spelled S A R R I Gilman.com. And we will be back in just a moment for the final word of advice. 
Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at BeTheTalk.com. And we're back with Sari Gilman and the final word of advice for Talk Universe. Okay, the final word of advice is make it worth their while. If you have people bothering to take the time to listen to whatever it is you're going to say, for however many minutes you're going to say it, make sure you're giving them something really worth their time. Sari Gilman, thanks so much for taking your time to be on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you for having me, Nathan. This was wonderful. What fun. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to BeTheTalk.com. See you tomorrow.